Boot fans, welcome on in. We are closing in on the end of 2014. So today, on the show, among other things, we're going to cover our best new boot of 2014, which we have up on the board right here. And we're going to run through an Elite Eight type bracket um, and break down what Rich and I think was the best boot of 2014. Welcome in, Rich. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Brian. Uh, fresh. I, I say I'm fresh in from soccer, but I'm a little bit ripe in from soccer, running the last minute tonight, so, you know. Well, we'll play. that's dedication, my friend, to be able to uh, to make it in from some, some indoor. Uh, you were playing indoor tonight? I mean, I'm north of the 49th parallel. I better be playing indoor in December. Well, that's it's freezing if I was playing outdoor. It feels like, it feels like Canada here today as well. Really? What yeah, do you, it was what 40 do you have to... It was a high of 40 Four... degrees. A high of forty degrees. Yeah, it was freezing. Uh, to use to use to use the American system, it was a high of like twenty eight today. <laughs> That's a little bit chillier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lucky you were playing indoors. We're also going to take a look at um, some of the more unique limited edition releases of twenty fourteen. I did a post on the website for that today, and we're going to go over that. And we're also going to look at some boots you have right there, Rich. Let's kick it off with those boots you have. Okay. In the post-Christmas rush, I picked up a pair of the Nike Mercurial Veloce. 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 Any of the above are correct pronunciations as far as I'm concerned. They are the model below the Nike Vapor 10. Now, have, uh, have you had I've a never. Good. Go Run, Brian. I was going to say, I've, have you I've had a chance to be... wear them yet? Uh, I wore them for 20 minutes tonight, just to kind of get a feel of them. And uh, I've never been a fan of the Mercurial series. Uh, probably something about these these things here that have that non-conical shape, and also. Some of the older, some of the older vapor models where it was that carbon fibery stiff sole plate, but these I actually there's a lot of flex to them. I mean, so it's quite nice. I I have no complaints thus far, but that's also 20 minutes of use. Right. Well, you know the nice thing about them as well is the fact that I've got the Vapor X here. They're actually pretty similar in styling to the Vapor X. Mm-hmm. So side by side, it's pretty tough to distinguish which is which, and that's something nice that I give you with the boots. I actually like those particular boots that you have right there because they perform really well. I mean, they're very simple, very affordable, and um, they give quality performance. They got the same sole play as well. Mine's a little bit muddier than yours, so as you can see, I play that door. Oh yeah, you've you've had those outside definitely, and that's actually the only one of the key ways to quickly tell is your sole play. Because whereas yours has uh, the sort of studs on the the rear the rear blades at the back have that transparent look to them. Yeah, what you can see. Uh, yeah, the uh, the old the old Velosh, uh have the 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 solid color look. Here's here's another one. Hold on. Ugh. Just getting off the boot well. Your Miracles, which has similar in the styling of the studs in the back. Okay, yep. And in general, they're apart from the design, another similar style boot in the range. But they have, if you flip it over, if you flip it to have a sole plate facing the camera, they have that lovely little hard bit at the bottom on the heel there. Yeah. The like um, the stiff bit, which I I. One of the main reasons I could never get into the Vapor series, uh, the Mercurial series, is because of that that insistence on having this really stiff uh, sole plate. I mean, I'm more about comfort than I am about blistering speed, so I'm liking the direction Nike's taken with this and with the Vapor 10 going with that uh, more TU sort of uh, ride system. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. I hope you enjoy uh, wearing them and testing them out, and I know we're going to look forward to hearing some updates from you on them. We've got some guys uh, tuned in right now. Anything that we're talking about, if you guys want to get involved in the conversation, do hit up the YouTube comment section. I'll be checking it out as we go along. Every so often, I let Rich just go off on a rant, 
and I'll check out what you guys have to say. So make sure you leave your comments. In a few minutes, we're going to go over our bracket, which we have up here. And as you can see, I've got our top eight, which we'll go through and label in a minute. And but before we do that, there's one other thing we want to cover, and that was a post that went on the website. I'm going to I'm going to take a second here to pull it up, Rich. Um, but it's a post that went on the website today, and it's covering limited edition releases from 2014. And I figured it would be a good opportunity for us to go through it. Um, so it should be coming up. Share this page. Okay. So it should be an opportunity for us to go over it. I'm also going to lock in my screen so that you can see my screen in one second. And I'll stay on it as we... As we discuss, oh, no, you, are we you, up sir, right have now? locked in a page. You have I locked have, in a page. I've locked in this page just for you, so you should be able to see this page, and I should be able to scroll it, and we should be able to talk through it. So Excellent. I didn't do any. This I didn't the first do any. What's that? This is the first I've seen of this page. So okay, yeah, yeah. This is I, not. I'm going to be. I'm going to be just as interested. I'm going to be just as intrigued as everybody else who might not have seen it yet. But I know you said you put this up earlier this afternoon. Yeah, so I put this up this afternoon when you were playing soccer. Didn't put them up in any particular order, and there are a lot of boots that weren't included on the list. But I figure we might as well run through it and just talk about some of the boots on it. Obviously, the first one up there is the Puma King SL Classico. Um, this is on our top eight for 2014. So it makes a few different lists this year. I know you're a fan of this look. I am... Definitely a fan of that look. I mean, it's 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 simple. It's elegant. It's, it's elegant. It's clean. It honestly, uh, to draw a parallel to the beverage that I'm currently can or a pint of Guinness. It has that black, with the white with a little bit of. It's a perfect looking boot. Yeah, it matches pretty well with your beer. <laughs> Next up, we have, and this is probably one of my favorite of the year, is the Blackout version of CDR 360, their lights out version that they retired the range with. We're obviously disappointed that the range is gone, but, I mean, it went out in style, right? I uh, went out in class, I mean, like, to shape it, it went out, but, uh, you know, that, unfortunately, is is the ways of, of the boot game, is that, uh, yeah, we... Uh, we all fall in love with a boot silo, and then, then a designer decides that uh, we don't need to have that anymore, and, and we're going to try something new. Yeah. Next up was the Yamamoto. I don't think we really need to talk about this design. I wasn't a fan. Didn't really like them in action. Didn't really stand out. Enough can, said. Can I talk about it for a second? Go ahead. All yours. Uh, they're They're terrifying. There is my that is my second right there. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was a good second. Um the Predator remakes. We had four well sorry, we had three of them. Um Adi uh, Adidas did their thing, Nike did their thing, which is a little bit further down right here. And they had their four remakes. We've talked about them in the past. Uh both collections were pretty iconic, covered pretty iconic boots, but they didn't give us that real feel for the old school boots that a lot of people still crave. No, that's 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 true. I mean, I think I think just from the look of the boots, uh, Adidas definitely uh, definitely wins this whole remake sort of war. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, they've they've given you whereas if you they plan over. Adidas, Adidas the, the same look of the original style onto sort of, well, current market materials and uh, chassis, shall we say. Uh, I mean, the, uh, I mean, was it the Accelerator was so popular that that was actually getting worn in games by professional players and yeah. semi-professional internationals alike. Was that what happened this past weekend? Uh, no, no, no. That was, uh, if you remember the European qualifiers with the uh, with the uh, the police officer from Gibraltar who was patrolling the midfield in the accelerators. That's right. 
And Paul Pogba was the pro player wearing them. So. Oh, Paul yeah. Pogba, yeah. Before he moved, before he moved back to Nike, because he just wears what he wants. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't unusual, care. He had the unusual series of boots he was wearing. Recently, most recently, we had the Puma Eva Speed Marco Royce version, which has those hands on them. Pretty unique, interesting. Um, good representation. Wasn't a real big fan. Adidas Prime Net was released in two different versions. I mean, a boot that's made of yarn is so interesting. And yet they sold out both versions within an hour or two of being released. So. It's... Um, it's one of those ones I'd love to try. I, I yeah, very much so. It's yeah, it's just one of those ones that I don't know. I don't know how to perform, how to feel. I know like when I wear some speed boots, that especially in more of the synthetic sort of things. Yeah. It feels like I'm uh, hitting a rock when I'm trying to kick the ball. Sometimes just with how thin the material is. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious what a woven upper would feel like to take a strike on a ball, it's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if anybody out there watching right now has had an experience with it, let us know in the comments down below. Or if there's a particular boot on this list that you want to comment on. Um, uh, I, mean, I just checked there a while. Yeah. Uh, while you were talking, so we, we've had a few comments come in already. Um, which oh, was, uh, Ben. Uh, What's that? I was just saying, we'll go to Ben's comment. Uh, what did we think of the uh, Puma King EF Plus? Uh, we we touched on that one last week. Yeah, if you watched last week's episode, we talked about them. Uh, maybe he's referring to how have they been working out through testing, and I'm just pulling them out. I actually have them in my boot bag here beside me, so I was pulling them out. Okay. Um, yeah, I've still got some concerns with the... Actually, you know what? Let's let's talk about these. La what's left on the list? list, list. We got uh, I think it's the vapor and the king tops. Okay, so let's talk about these first, and then I'll pull up uh, an image of the boots on screen. Uh, we got the CR7 edition, which was really really slick. I think it it, it signified his year, represented what he's all about. Um, I like that one. It's it's classy. It's yeah. You know, it's just a shame that he. Uh, he gets he changes boots like I change he changes boot colorways sorry like I change socks so we got to see it for like I think one match one match that's that's correct <laughs> you know a lot, yeah. a lot of players are doing that nowadays though you remember Messi had his birthday version uh, oh yes the Messi birthday boots which, yes which are, actually ah, I think they're pretty are right here um well right. Mr Messi who had like thirty seven different colorways this year. These things are god awful, and they are my choice for worst looking boot of the year. Well, well, Brian, uh, 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 they like something going out and end up with a pair of Nile Quinn shiny disco pants. They would, yeah, they look really good in a big tall giraffe as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wild. We also had the. The Puma King Top 98, which was actually built off the same model 98 boot um, with these, those two different colors. These are actually still available right now, which I just I just found out last week. You can still get them on soccer.com. So, yeah, no, uh, they were... I saw them around Black Friday. Uh, they're an, it's an interesting one. Uh, I wasn't 100% crazy on it when I first saw them come out. My opinion on it's kind of softened, softened a little bit. And maybe that's because, uh, well, I know Boxing Day for sure, Alex Song was wearing them for West Ham. Alex right. Song, of course, on loan at West Ham from Barcelona. Uh, so he, he actually had a pair of them on in match, and I was just out heading out the door on my way to work on Boxing Day and saw Alex Song playing in them, and I went, they actually look quite good. I'm actually yeah. quite a fan of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they look good in action with the West Ham kit. All right, that was our list right there. Uh, as I said, if you guys have any comments on any of these, feel free to have the, the, the uh, comment section down below. I'll be checking out the messages. Stop sharing, because I'm going to bring it back here to... Oh, uh, we while on? we bring it back to you, Brian. Yes, overall hi. winner. Hi. Overall winner for the limited edition releases this year. Uh, springing it on you, what would you pick? I would go with the, um, the Ronaldo's. 
the CR7 release. Okay. I just I love, would go I love with the white, white and gold combo is, is just it works for me a lot. Mm -hmm. How about you? I can understand that. It's a classy looking combo. Uh, I would go with the Adidas Predator Accelerator. Yeah. That's not a quality it's, one. It's, it's it's the sort of it's one of those boots which kind of made kind of made boots fun. Uh, the '98 World Cup, Zidane, the whole business. It it was just one of those boots where it kind of came on the market. It hit, and you're like, "What is it?" And then everything kind of built from there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good choice. I'm sure that's going to be a lot of people's choice. Um, and anybody watching right now, you can always leave your your selection in the comments, and we'll we'll also check it out. Uh, going back to Ben's comment, which was on the EF Plus, and I've got the EF Plus, Plus right here. That I've been wearing, so I've worn these a few times. You can see that they're still in pretty good condition. You sir have been wearing those on not grass surfaces. <laughs> no, I wore those indoor this past weekend, but we we do have an issue. We do have an issue. Oh, yeah. And I did bring this up when I initially talked about the boots. And that is this right here. Oh. Is, yeah, is that a is that a fish is that like a fishing lure? Like uh That's part like of my fishing it, it looks lure. honestly honestly it looks like fishing wire the where I'm stood. But yeah, I can see it now. It doesn't have yeah, it's it's come out of the uh of the of the lacing, and I've let I've let Puma know, and um, it's kind of interesting because the area that it pulled out of. Let me just show you real quick. Let's just detail this, and let's let's talk about. It. Okay. So okay, so you can see how each lace kind of it goes, or each of the uh, lacing structures that's in place kind of comes in and out and loops around. Well, each yes. one comes underneath this double layer of stitching. Let me just lock my picture in so people can stay. In tune with me. Um, you can see how you see that double layer stitching this right here, Rich. That runs yes, along. Yes, do. Okay. Well, each of the lace lacing like loops comes down and through that, except this one right here. You can kind of see that bubble region right there. Yeah, no, I was gonna say there's a random like there's a random indentation to nowhere. Yeah, and that's where this one was that pulled out. And I'm just unsure because I would have I would have thought that this this like double layer of stitching was something to do with keeping these little lacing loops in place. Yeah, um, no. Because this is, this is the Kevlar cable. So it needs to be held down in place. So it should, like, kind of run through this region right here. Can you see it? That kind of well, goes between the stitching. Yeah, well, it, it should. It should kind of loop back onto the Kevlar, no? Um, It should, but alas, it doesn't. So I send them in. A little word of warning on that. I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, but otherwise, performance-wise, I really like these. And I and this past this past weekend when I was playing, and uh, these are uh, with the 11 Pros that I was testing out because I've got both pairs in testing right now. Um, and I very much enjoy the 11 Pro. I like what they're all about, and they feel good in game. But in between, I switched into these, and I stayed wearing these, but I switching back in because I really enjoy what they have to offer. I like the uh, the 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 definition that's on the upper. And how they feel to strike the ball. So I'm going to review them. Obviously, that's a slight negative, and it's going to cause some concerns. But I'm going to delve into it a little bit deeper and figure out well, if this is something that can be resolved or not. Brian, just very quickly, while so there, those are the eyelets for the boot. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. You so then, to... Sorry, did I not explain it well enough? Yeah. Oh, no, so no, 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 you, no, you explained it fine. I was just double checking because you said yeah. you're going to keep using the boot. Yeah, I'm going to keep, because what I did is I just wrapped it up around and it still works. There's obviously a gap here that it doesn't have this eyelet in place. I just okay, look. yeah. But, I mean, they still work fine. It just looks a little bit odd and I'm not quite sure why this would have pulled out. So, All right, let's move along. Let's get cracking on our um, best new boot of 2014, which we have up on the board up there. And top left, I wrote down the boots that we have. We've decided on our top eight, which is the Predator Instinct, Superfly 4, the Vapor X, the 11 Pro, the King S Style Classical, 
The Umbro UX1, surprise inclusion for some people maybe. The Magista Obra and the Evo Power. And I have all of the boots down here beside me. So we'll be able to talk about each of them as we go along. We are going to have our live draw right now. Right now. Actually, how about we just check the comments before we do our live draw? All right, let's check the comments. Let's check the comments because we want to make sure everybody's in and ready to uh, to watch. Oh, Jackson asked about the the Marco Rice boots. Uh, oh, my comments just disappeared, which we uh, which we just talked about a little bit and the fact that uh, you know they're yeah. It's it's an interesting boot, uh, nice looking design, but kind of a weird one because Marco Royce has been mostly wearing the Puma Evo Power boot, just slapped yeah. on with the most recent colorway of the Evo Speed. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I highlighted it a few weeks ago. Uh, not a few weeks ago now, actually. Yeah, it was a couple months ago. There was a picture of Marco Royce wearing. A pair of Evo powers with uh, like the uh, the purple the purple release from the Evo Speed, yeah colorway. That's right. So it's you know kind of a fun one. I know Mar Marco Royce realistically is more of that midfield sort, that attacking midfielder sort of role, like a Cesc Fabregas for me. So he would be he's at home in the Evo power. Yeah. But he, yeah, no, it's it's he's still, I guess, big on the big on the Evo Speed promotion in Germany. But they really should just go with like that marketing Aguero Falcao was the Evo Speed kind of guys, and they can move Royce over. Right. Pr probably there's definitely got to be something behind it, right? So I mean, we'll probably find out pretty soon. Um, Cub creates wants to know when did you guys start. To to get into collecting boots. Well, the website started in 2008, so we're going on five years, six years, so just over six years. Well, actually, I had a lot of boots before then as well, but that's when the website started. So, uh, Okay, let's get into this bracket. So I have wrote down the names of all the boots right here. I'm going to pop them in the hat. We're going to do a quick little draw. This is going to be a random draw, and I'm going to write them up on the board. Okay, our first game is going to be, our first matchup is going to be the Vapor X against the dun, UX. Dun, dun, dun. Vapor X against the UX. Oh. This is sort of like that ultimate one versus eight battle. Kind of is, isn't it? If we were going to use, yeah, if we were going to use college basketball seedings, this would be a one versus eight. <laughs> Ah, in other words, the UX one has probably been eliminated uh, already. Oh, uh, yeah, not, if I have, not if I have anything to say about that. Check out this matchup. Instinct versus the Superfly. Wow. Versus the Superfly. Okay, next matchup. We got four left right here. We got Evil Power versus the Eleven Pro. And let's just reiterate the fact that we wanted to do a random drawing because um, it would be unfair in the last two that are in here. It would be unfair to try and set up our own bracket, right? Well, so, well, had we have set up our own bracket. We could have very much rigged it so that two of our favorite boots of the year were in the final, no matter what. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So this makes a little bit more competition. King as a Classico against the Magista Obra. Oh, that's an interesting one too. Okay, let's get cracking. We're gonna have to get into this fast. Top left, we're gonna be matching up the Vapor X against the UX One. I've got vote right here. Um, all right, who gets your vote, Rich? Uh, you know where I'm going. Uh, McCall, I, I love a dark horse. Exactly, yep. I love a dark horse. I love a dark horse. So uh, I love the UX one. Uh, I have a pair of the UX ones. Uh, I thought they were they're stellar. Uh, I mean, they suit... They suit that hard-hitting, defensive-minded player 
who also has a decent touch on the ball. Uh, definitely one of my favorite boots of the year, actually. Uh, Umbro don't get, a, don't get a lot of credit and publicity these days, uh, having lost a lot of high-profile athletes, although they have gained Pepe when he's not headbutting players, but that's yeah. another matter. But uh, no, love what the UX one has. It's just something something different. Nobody expected Umbro to go with that all sort of technology look. It's very tech heavy. I mean, it's it's also I mean a lot of the kids. If if, if you play the wing, it's also very heavy. It is a heavy boot. They're over ten ounces. Um, very well built. But it is, yeah, it is designed for that holding midfielder and those central defenders and those yeah, guys who like to just wire shots. And I like that instep. I like what the instep has to offer. Oh, yeah, with the uh, with the memory foam sort of move there. Yeah. Plenty of definition, as you can see, right throughout that strike zone. Okay, so that's the UX1. That's, that's a good case for the UX1. I mean, a lot of people would immediately just go straight to that vapor. And, again, this is a vapor that I've worn. It's got that dimple textured upper. It's got that no tongue design, so it's tongueless. Very sleek, Nike look. And I mean, this has a lot going for it as well. It's pretty universal across a lot of positions on the pitch. Um, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the UX one, testing them. I like what they have to offer. But ultimately, for the general player, performance-wise, I'm going to have to vote for the Vapor. Uh, I, I'm as much as I love the UX one. Yeah. And I wish, I wish that I would let's say have had an experience with the vapor, and it just have been terrible. I have no experience with the vapor. You have had experience with both. Yeah. Uh, I cede to you as much as I think the UX one is one of the best and most interesting releases of 2014. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting boot. So I have unfortunately have well I like I said uh, yeah, I'll see that that the you that the uh, that the vapor the vapor 10 is probably the boot which is uh, more well-rounded to more players on the field. So Vapor wins this one. Well, let's just point out the fact that there are terrific deals available in a boot like this. And if anybody's looking for something that's just a little bit different that you want to test out, then definitely consider them. And if these had to be matched up with other boots, I think they might have had a better chance. But ultimately, the Vapor X is going to move on. Next matchup. The Pred Instinct against the Superfly. Wow. <coughs> just to note, the Superfly version I have right here, the Turf version, I don't have my... FG version at the moment, so we're substituting these ones in. And I've got the Pred Instinct right here. How do we even vote on this one? This is going to be a tough one. Well, for me, it's a good thing that it's not the actual matchup I see in front of me. Because I am all about the Elastico Superfly. Yeah. Uh, so, that being said... Uh, The Superfly 4 with the dynamic fit collar. Yeah. Which doesn't really suit from what you've said. And we've had, oh, uh, countless hours of discussion on this one between, between ourselves. Doesn't yeah. fit the type of player that that boot is designed for. Yeah. It, it's... I mean, it's functional. Yeah, it's functional, but it's not like the Vapor where it's more dynamic in form. I mean, it has the name dynamic mid cut collar, but in play, it kind of causes a little bit of restriction on your ankle, where it does give you that as one feel, but for me, it was never as dynamic as it needed to be. <clears throat> no, I, I mean, and I'm going to go... Then you have then you have the Adidas Predator, the Predator Instinct, redesigned yeah. this year to be like the boot for all people. Pretty much, yes. Uh, they've they've jacked the weight up to about ten ounces. 
from seven ish from the Lethal Zone series. Uh, whole new redesigned comfort chassis soul plate. It's just been entirely retooled to be sort of that control and power boot. It has. Uh, I mean, both of these guys, both of these boots are definitely tech heavy. Um, both companies have invested a lot of money uh, promoting what they have to offer. But ultimately, um, even though there's going to be a lot of Nike fans who are disappointed to see the Superfly be eliminated so early in the competition, this one has got to be the the Predator Instinct. For everything that Adidas has done with the range this year, for the poor performance that they offer, the players that are wearing them, um, quality boot, we let this one move on? Uh, I think so, and especially if I could just quickly, when we throw out that idea of that Superfly idea, that the caller is, yeah. when you think right. about the idea that so many players have been wearing the Superfly, but have been cutting that, that collar off. That's right. That's because exactly. they don't like the performance. And we There's even no saw way... You, you can't have that boot move on. Yeah. We saw <laughs> we're that's it. In the World Cup as well. <clears throat> Next up, other side of the bracket. Evo Power versus 11 Pro. Let's keep this moving along. Right here we got the 11 Pro. It's a newer release, got the dual tone colorway, a honeycomb style paneling that's underneath the boot, underneath the upper. Gives us some definition. We got the Evo Power, but it's GSF, which is something that I like and enjoy very much so. A uh, boot that's all about comfort, a little bit of extra power, thanks to the Accu Foam that's in the forefoot along the strike zone. You can see how much definition is in that also. Where are you going here, Rich? Uh, the, the 11 Pro was one of those boots when I first kind of saw it, I was waiting for it to come out. Uh, the Evo Power was a boot which really uh, took me by surprise to start off the year. So it's sort of like a battle between the original new boot of 2014 and then the most recent boot of 2014. Uh, I love the Evo Power. Uh, I have uh, I did a review on a pair of the Evo Power 2 series, uh, and honestly, it's it rates highly up against top tier boots I've worn. It's it's that good of a boot. Uh, so don't have much don't have any experience with the new 11 Pro. Uh, I know the old 11 Pro series was a little bit maligned at times. Uh, just performance wise, uh, I have to go with the Evo Power. I mean. Seth Fabregas is lighting up the English Premier League in them this season. Yeah, and I completely agree. I like everything this boot has to offer. <clears throat> and, um, again, I just love the fact that they've got that extra stretch and then they can go both ways. The 11 Pro is a quality boot, but it's not proven yet. So, I mean, it has to be evil power to move on. Let's move it on. My pen gone. Last matchup. King SL Classico against the Magista Obra. Mm. The original dynamic mid cut collar <clears throat> and that fly knit material versus the more classic traditional remake of the Classico, the SL version. I think I know where you're going visually on this one. Visually, yes. We are going to Classico because it looks fantastic. Uh, but, as we all know, I'm not the biggest fan of ridiculously super light boots. There's just something about it. Uh, something yeah. about ridiculously super light boots, which I just find uncomfortable. So... We got, we got the Classico at 6.2 ounces. We got the Obra at 7.2 ounces. <clears throat> I mean... It, I'm a fan of anything in that sort of like seven, seven and up. Yeah. You start getting into the the, the low sixes and things like that. It starts getting a little bit light for me, and it, I I develop hot spots when I'm running around. So, haven't worn any of the Magista series, but it's a boot which is Nike's done good with the collar there, shall we say? Because yeah. it's definitely suiting 
the type of player. Exactly. This is a lot more redefined or like defined than the um, and the Superfly is because it's more particular to a certain type of player. The boot has been advertised towards a certain type of player, and, and I agree with you. I think that dynamic make a collar suit set style of player. <clears throat> yeah. No, now, I agree with that. Personally, <clears throat> I'm all about the visual appearance with this one. I've tested them out. I really enjoy the performance. Wasn't very keen on the performance of this one. I don't like the fa fact for my own personal use that they fit very wide and the particular style of the boot. But in saying that, <clears throat> my vote has to go towards these for, for this one for the simple reason that they were revolutionary in 2014. As I said, that dynamic make color suits the appropriate player. And just because they don't suit my style in terms of wit, they do offer something to players that need that little bit extra room in play. So yeah, no, I I would agree with the Vegista taking this one because it it completely if it did one thing this year as a boot, it completely redefined the boot world and got everybody talking about something different. Yeah, and it did get Nike to bring out the prime knit full sock. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, Adidas. Prime net. Full Sorry, sock. yeah, Adidas with the prime net full sock in retaliation. Things are awful. awful. <laughs> the uh, most revolutionary you boot. You mean high heel boot? Most revolutionary high heel boot? Well, no, no, but like the most re the, the boot which sort of changed boots, the Magista Obra, also brought out a retaliation boot which could easily be described as the worst boot ever visually released. Yes, 100% to, to, to human eyes, at least, because it hasn't been actually released. Awful, awful. If anybody out there likes the um, the Prime Net FS, what was, called, what was the FS, right? Full Sock? Is that what it's called? Uh, the FS, the Full Sock, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror if just you think be, that that is a nice-looking boot. But just be honest and leave a comment down below so we know who you are and we avoid you from, from, for the future. Um, it's my final time, so we got four boots left. We got the vapor. I got, I just threw them all over the ground right here. I should have kept this a little bit more organized. Better instinct. The evil power. And the Magista Obra. All right. <clears throat> vapor X against the Pride Instinct. Oh, this is a tough one. Now we're getting down to the tough ones. <clears throat> Where do you go on this one? Wow, there's uh, a lot of people right now. I go with the Predator Instinct. Oh man, it's a boot. It's a boot which suits my style of play huh? more and than the Vapor Ten. Now, I suppose we could look at it another way too. Which boot is more revolutionary to their series? Well, that <clears throat> has to be the Predator, in my opinion. Because it's a complete redesign. Yeah. It's a complete redesign, and it's also a boot that, as we are pretty much aware at this stage, is probably going to end the Predator series. Now, yes. Now, the Vapor, again, personally, the Vapor suits my style a lot more. I very much enjoyed wearing them. I love the touching control on the ball. Um, they're a very energetic style boot. The Predators I wore, I definitely enjoyed. <clears throat> I definitely like striking the ball in these boots. Didn't suit my style as much, but I agree with you. They are a little bit more revolutionary, and they do offer a little bit more to the market than the Vapor does. <clears throat> so this could be one where we could, yeah go the route of the old the the old war horse, the Adidas Predator, because it's more things to more people? Yeah, I think so. I think so. <clears throat> now I'm not saying that the performance of the Vapor X is not highly up there, but yeah, it's gotta go it's gotta go to the Predator right here. And what the Predator has on offer. So we're going Predator. We're going Predator. In in a shocker. 
That's that's a tough one. I think that's a tough one for anybody. Yeah, it's 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 one of those it's one of those ones where you you look at that and you go, well, it's if, if I suppose if you look at it in terms of sales, there's only one way to go. Yeah. Do we do we even have to battle these two out? Uh. Yes. Okay. What's uh, your argument? What's your argument for the uh, Magista? Andre Iniesta is the greatest passer in the world, and he wears them. Oh, that's a good argument. <laughs> that is the unfortunately. Uh, that is that is kind of sort of the only argument I have in this matchup. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean they're all well and good beating something like the the um, that's not a classical, <clears throat> but to me they don't compare to what this much more advanced and suitable boot for defenders, midfielders, and forwards has an offer. Mm. Again, we're looking at a boot which is uh, more things to more players. Yeah, which is has impacted the market most, and I I do think that this boot has. I. Yeah, no, I, w I would agree with that. I mean, this is probably the battle uh, now we're in, uh, ex if we sort of excluded the Vapor 10, uh, this would kind of be, for me, my sort of top three boots of the year. Yeah. Or in terms of impacting the market with something new. Yeah. Well, then we're down I mean, to two. <coughs> And they both kind of have the same mentality and the same performance characteristics in that they're designed for striking the ball. Um, both comfortable options. Also, also designed for controlling the ball. Controlling the ball, yeah. So the question is, where does your vote go on the best boot for 2014? Is it going to be with the Predator Instinct? Or is it going to be with the Evil Power? Uh, my vote is going to go because personally, hands down, the best boot of the year in terms of the technology and everything else, from what I've and just from general what I've seen with players wearing them, personally, is the Evo Power. However. I should make a case, like I say, for the Predator Instinct in that they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. There's an old dog. It's got some new tricks. Yeah. It's it's um, been designed in a very modern fashion, but Adidas has also stepped back a little bit and taken some... And design elements from prior Predators. Not the latest two or three series, but we're going back a few editions. They've done a nice job with this. <clears throat> and I think both boots are very, very similar in terms of what they offer the market. But for me, and what gives the Evo Power one step ahead, or the one up is just that flexibility because comfort wise these boots are absolutely extraordinary mm -hmm. I mean how many boots can you do this with and the upper uh, material which is the Arab light actually stretches in, in both directions so it's a very yeah. responsive boot the elements that are on the strike zone as you can kind of see from like pushing on them they're very responsive as well and they move in unison with your foot and they, they allow to contour your fit as well. I just think that these boots offer the market something completely, um, I don't want to say unique, but kind of like more higher end, more adaptable to more players on the pitch. No, exactly. I mean, that's the one thing about the Evo Power. It's the only boot where, whether you play goalie, yeah. if you're a keeper, if you're a wing back, if you're a central defender, a holding midfielder, a creative attacking midfielder, a central midfielder, wing midfielders, or even up top, it's a boot where we can say it's going to be quality no matter what your role is. Absolutely. It's kind of like the universal boot. Yeah. There we have it. 
if there's one thing you want, it's an all-arounder. You, you always need a good all-arounder. If cricket has taught me anything, all-arounders win you things. And the fact they come in at 7.7 .7 ounces. Yeah. Pretty ideal weight point as well. Fit. Especially for a power focused boot. No, to fit to fit F, to fit a power boot at to fit a power boot in at a at a weight equivalent of a speed boot with the comfort, with the performance, with everything, yes. Yeah. It's to quote Chris Kamara, unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Look at a soccer Saturday right there. Um, okay, so this is our officially our boot of new boot of 2014. And um, let's reiterate that it's a new release boot that was released in 2014. This is our boot of the year right here. If I had some fancy music, I'd add it to it. You guys have seen our bracket, which is up behind me. We've run through it. We've given you our arguments. We want to hear your thoughts. What boot you would put top of the list, and why would you would put top of the list? Leave it down in the comment section below. We'll check out the comments. We'll respond. Get involved in the conversation, and maybe we'll even mention some in our first episode of 2015. Right, Rich? Yes, yes. Because uh, where where does the time go? Uh, it is yeah, three days away from the new year. It is. So let's Which bring means. in that. We'll, we'll be bringing you guys lots of fun things in 2015. We appreciate all you guys have, uh, you know, all you guys have been following along, leaving us comments, giving us thumbs up. You can give us a thumbs up. We definitely appreciate it in the video so you know you guys have been watching. And uh, we'll connect with you guys in 2015. Here's that boot of the year again. What a boot. What an outstanding boot that was. Oh, that's nice. And is. <clears throat> All right, well, Rich, you have a good 2014-15 uh, celebration night on the 1st or the 31st. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You as well. Thank you very much. I'll be doing the 4 o'clock Irish New Year's. I'll be heading out to the local for that, so that's what I'll be doing. Oh, yeah, because yeah, because the time difference. Yeah, so it'll be 4 o'clock, yep. It's 4 o'clock, so we do the 4 o'clock thing, so that's when I'll be celebrating New Year's rather than midnight. All right, so I will uh, I'll be doing the midnight, well, I suppose, yeah, the midnight Eastern New Year's, I guess. Yeah. Don't know where, don't know how, but yeah. You'll, you'll figure it out. You midnight. Got you got midnight that. Eastern, beverages included. Beverage. That's all I know. <clears throat> All right, well, we appreciate you guys watching. This has been Boots and Bands. Until 2015, Rich, have a good one. All right, take, take care, guys.